before we get on with this video, there's something I'd like to say. Well, two things. One, I'm not a professional. The second thing that I'd like to say is the brake pedal itself comes installed with this clevis. The kit for the proportion and valve master cylinder comes with these two clevises. You're going to have to determine which clevis you need for your application before you go and completely install this because to get this pin out of this clevis you can see here it's got a snap ring on it and you'll need a set of snap ring pliers to get that loose and if you got this all installed it could be tight trying to get that little snap ring off and it's hard to get it on and off in tight situations you lose it and you're in trouble you just have to go to the hardware store to get you another snap ring but that's my forward word to the video so make sure you know which clevis you're going to use before you continue on <laughs> with your install. Hey everybody, I'm Dennis. Welcome to Patina Code. It's come to the point on my project where it's time to install brakes. So today, this video is gonna focus on installing a Wildwood brake pedal and master cylinder assembly. It's a universal install. All these components will work with or without the brake booster. My truck is gonna be a manual brake system, so there will be no booster. But, as I said, all the parts that I'm gonna feature in this video will work with the booster or non-booster. So the first part that I wanna get into, jump right into this, is the brake pedal. Wildwood brake pedal part number 340-13834 comes complete as you see here with the clevis already installed and the pad with mounting screws. Now, to successfully install the brake pedal to the firewall, you're gonna need this particular bracket, and this is gonna be the next item we come across on our parts list breakdown. Okay, so you're wondering, why do you need this little bracket? Well, it's quite simple. Without it, you will not be able to install your Wildwood brake pedal assembly to the firewall. Wildwood part number 250-3677 is a bracket kit plate adapter. You will need this to mount your brake pedal assembly to the firewall. This is a separate component and must be ordered to properly install and complete the installation of your Wildwood firewall mounted brake pedal assembly. If you look at it, there's six holes in it. We're gonna focus on the one at the top and the one at the bottom. Come to the assembly, it has a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom. These two join together, not only enables you to mount your brake pedal to the firewall securely, it also adds a little bit more strength to the firewall, preventing firewall flex. Brake pedals are levers, and all levers require pressure. So, this will keep the firewall from flexing when you apply pressure to the brakes. Next, we're going to move on to the Wildwood Master Cylinder, and from there, we're going to go to the complete install of these components. Now we're getting to the meat and potatoes. This is the Wildwood Master Cylinder. A few things I want to point out. The part number that I'm going to give you is going to be for this particular item, which is the Ball Mill 7H Bore Master Cylinder. They also make them in a variety of different sizes from 5 eighths to an inch and a quarter. Also in different finishes from polished to black. So just keep in mind that the part number that I'm going to give you is simply just so that you can look it up and see that it contains everything in the whole kit. The master cylinder, the proportion of valve, and all the fittings and hardware that you're going to need. Wildwood part number 261-13271 comes with everything you see here the proportion and valve the master cylinder the bracket to hold the proportion and valve to the master cylinder hard lines and all the hardware needed for the complete install now with the components lined out it's time to begin with the install all right let's get to this you might have noticed early on that I already had the holes drilled and everything ready to go here so what I used was a one and three quarter inch diameter hole saw bit you can get away with using a one and a half I just wanted that extra little clearance that way when I was passing the master cylinder through there I wouldn't scratch up the boot as I was doing some test fitting the other tip that I have is if you're out here doing this by yourself such as I am you can bolt your bracket assembly onto the firewall using two bolts lock it down onto the firewall then you come inside make sure everything is squared up take the first countersunk bolt run it through the top of the bracket, then go inside, run the nuts down, and then you got your brake pedal assembled to the firewall. So next, you just go outside, put the other bolt in on the bottom hole, and run that down, and then your brake pedal is established and it's in its spot there on the firewall. So at this point, I have successfully mounted the bracket and the brake pedal assembly to the firewall. It's important to go back and double check your work and make sure you have the bolts as tight as they need to be because once you put the master cylinder on you will no longer be able to get a hold of the bolt from the outside without removing the master cylinder so when tightening these bolts 
you do it just like you do a car tire. You start at one, get it snug, move down to the other one, get it snug, and you alternate between tightening the bolts until it's locked down. Now that I'm satisfied that my pedal and bracket is securely locked down and in position on my firewall, it's time to move to the master cylinder. The first thing you wanna do is coat the boot with some dielectric grease. I've already done this ahead of time. It makes it easier to install. It's a tight fit, shoving it between the hole that's provided in the mounting bracket. It is a bit snug, but with firm pressure and lightly turning it from side to side, as you're moving it forward, it will work itself into place. Now with our master cylinder pushed completely through to the firewall, the rubber boot is actually holding it in place. Right now it's gonna be a lot easier to be doing this on your own, but you wanna work quickly. You're gonna get out the proportionate valve bracket. This will install in the same mounting locations as the master cylinder itself. The proportionate valve bracket. Now, before you install this, you're gonna go have to get into your parts bag that came with your equipment and get out these aluminum spacers. These must be installed behind the bracket. So the spacer goes on first, then the bracket, and then you can run your bolts through. Without installing these spacers, you're gonna have trouble lining up the hard lines when it becomes time to put those on. So these spacers are important to properly lining up the brake fluid lines. When tightening the bolts down to the master cylinder, you're gonna to wanna to remember, you're working with aluminum. So you're gonna to wanna to tighten each bolt equally until you get it all the way down. Moving right along, now that we got the proportionate valve bracket on, it's time to put on the proportionate valve. Wildwood has made it easy with this because if you look at it closely, you can see there's some letters stamped on it. And what these letters are, you have F-I, R-I, and then you have F-O, F-O, R-O. And what this is, is the front brake line distribution coming from the master cylinder, rear brake line distribution coming from the master cylinder, and then the FO, FO is front out, so there's two ports for the front, so you could run individual to the right and left side of the vehicle, and then you have a single port for the rear out. So this is why it was important to get the brake master cylinder bracket for this proportionate valve put on with those aluminum spacers, because if you didn't, it would have offset this in a different way and the lines that came with this proportion and valve kit would not have fit so if you don't have them on here go back and do it before you try to install this in your supplied kit was the brake light switch so it's just this here little boot and two wires you just poke them through there it's a little tough i took a razor and kind of cut off the nipples that way to Wires would push through a little easier, but you install this, push it down over your prongs, and then you run the wires out to the proper connections. I wanna talk a little bit about the master cylinder for somebody that's new to all this stuff. There's a little bit of confusion maybe in it. So I just wanna go over a couple things. One of the most important things is this is all laid out for you. So you, as long as you can read directions and follow instructions with the paperwork that came with your equipment, you won't have any issues. Like I said before, Wildwood made it easy. They got the proportion of valve marked. All you have to do is put the joining lines to where they're supposed to go and you won't have any issues. Whether it's a Wildwood master cylinder or a whatever master cylinder, always remember that the big chamber is for the front brakes. The small chamber is for the rear brakes. All right, I have a tip on how to install a proportion of valve. It's a little tricky, but this is the best way that I found to do it. So first you wanna get the mounting bolt and put it in the upper position of the bracket and the proportion of valve. Let that swing back and lay loosely against the firewall. Next, you get your hard lines once you've established the correct positioning of those, and you thread them lightly into the proportion of valve. Swing the proportion of valve up to where the hard lines meet up with the ports in the master cylinder, and then you lightly thread them in as well. Alternating back and forth between the master cylinder and the proportion of valve when tightening down these threads will help you realize if there's gonna be any binding issues. The bracket on the proportion of valve is slotted so that you can move it from the right to the left if you need to. And just take your time and gently get all these tightened down, hand tight, and then you install the, the second bolt in the mounting spot on the proportion of valve. And once you're completely sure that you have everything right and everything's gonna work out for you, tighten everything down, and then you're done putting on the master cylinder proportion of valve. All right, that's it, we made it. We're gonna go inside, attach the clevis from the brake pedal to the master cylinder push rod. Now, remember, like I said in earlier in the video, make sure that you have selected the correct clevis to go with the application that you're using. You also will notice that my master cylinder is dry. There's no fluid in the master cylinder. Most people are gonna bench bleed their master cylinder while it's off of the vehicle. There's a few weeks yet before I decide to run brake lines. So 
once I get to that point, I will bleed the master cylinder with it on the vehicle and then I'll plumb my brake lines from there. I hope it's helped somebody. I enjoyed making the video. I just wanted to get, uh, get this out there for people that are interested and might want to know what this setup's about. If you've seen it in Jags or Summit or Speedway and you're wondering, man, I wonder if I can make that work. Well, now you know you can and <laughs> you know you can do it by yourself. So somebody's probably like, he didn't do that by himself. But look, it's an age old trick, man. Vice grips on one side, you go on the other side and torque down the bolt. Simple as that. As I said, I hope you enjoyed the video and the purpose of it, besides getting the master cylinder and brake pedal installed on my vehicle, was to show you how you could install it in your vehicle or even help you make decision on whether or not you want to go this route or not. If you like what you saw and you want to see more on the progression of Zero, which is the 56 Chevy Task Force pickup truck bare metal rat rod right here behind me, you can come to my Instagram page. Follow me at Patina Code. And if you want to become a member of Patina Code, all you have to do is follow, direct message over a few pictures and some specs on what it is that you have, what it is that you're working on or you're building. It doesn't have to be a rat rod, it doesn't have to be a patina rod, it could be a regular car. Be more than happy to have you on the team. Get your feature worked up, get you posted up, put you on the board with the rest of our team. The team is awesome. We got a good group of people over there. They like to answer questions. They like to help out when they can. So with all that said, thanks for watching. Stay with me. Thank you.